Hi everyone and welcome back to the Hair Loss Show, episode 61. In today's episode, we're gonna go back through some uh, Q&A uh, from the questions that you've submitted. Uh, so stick around and we'll go through some of those questions. Thanks very much. Welcome to the Hair Loss Show. Dr. Russell Knudsen and Dr. Vikram J. Aprakash discuss issues relating to hair loss and the medical and surgical treatment of hair loss in both men and women. Hi everyone and uh, thanks for uh, watching. We're going to go through some Q&A today. Uh, remember if, you, if you're enjoying the content that we're, we're putting out, please remember to, to like and subscribe. It helps promote the channel and gets that information out to more people. So without further ado, let's get back into uh, some more Q&A and these are the questions that uh, you submitted uh, and we'll just go through a few more in, in today's episode. So the next question, uh, I'm Suman from India. I watch all your videos. I'm 20 years of eight years of age um, and the problem with many people who are suffering from hair uh, loss uh, dermatologist doctors are not available due to lockdown uh, cannot start medication due to this so during lockdown how do you treat your hair loss until we find ourselves a doctor um, this is a serious issue uh, please address if you can and I think that's probably a, fa a fair point um, during lockdown a lot of people uh, are sort of have, have time uh, everyone, a lot of people are busy but a lot of people have time and, and sort of a Addressing issues uh, with with their hair um, during this time, I can speak from personal experience. A lot of us have had to change uh, the mode in which we, we're doing things, and so certainly I can speak uh, for you know Russell and myself. And in, in, in our clinic, we're doing a lot more of remote consultations, so telemedicine via Skype or Zoom, uh, etc. So you still do have access to people online now. I'll be the first one to admit that that is not a ideal substitute for seeing someone in person. So if you've watched some of our videos before, we've done some in-person consultations uh, here. Uh, it's, you know, seeing someone uh, and up close and being able to, to uh, see what is going on on the scalp, being able to uh, have a look with a dermatoscope and magnify everything 50 times. You don't have that when you're, um, reviewing someone remotely but in the current climate with where we're trying to practice social distancing certainly in our clinic we're trying to limit the number of people going in and out of the clinic uh, we do have to implement uh, telemedicine and so i think that's useful and i, I know that uh, there are countries where things are set up to try and promote that. Uh, pharmacies are now accepting online uh, prescriptions, so we can fax or email prescriptions directly from the clinic and you can pick up your, your medication. So uh, whilst I think it's not ideal, I think in the current environment, I think it's still, uh, it is still better to see someone remotely um, and see if they can be able to diagnose um, your condition appropriately via, you know, uh, via webcam and, and then implement, implement a, a treatment option for you um, and see how, see how that goes. I really wouldn't recommend, you know, buying things online and, and starting and diagnosing yourself. I think that's, there's a potential risk with that. Um, so trying these online services would be of benefit. So I hope you find that useful. Um, next question. Uh, hello, is reducing, mono uh, uh, reducing minoxidil 5% from twice a day to once a day safe for men? Uh, do I have to apply the topical minoxidil on my full scalp or only on the crown and other bald area? Thanks. So yes, so we've talked about minoxidil in one of our previous episodes. Uh, if you look at the half-life of minoxidil, it is a, a, over 18 hours, so therefore use of minoxidil twice a day, topical minoxidil twice a day, like it says on the bottle, is probably not necessarily, doesn't necessarily give you additional benefit. So for most people, once a day is sufficient. So I don't think there's any issue about reducing it from twice a day to once a day. You're not gonna experience any uh, side effects or shedding or anything like that. You can just stop and switch it to, to once a day. Uh, in terms of where to apply the minoxidil, really you don't, first thing it needs to be applied to the scalp. Let's be clear, if you apply it to the hair, it doesn't do anything. It needs to actually penetrate through the, the surface of the skin. So making sure you apply it onto the scalp is first of all, is the uh, prime importance. Um, secondly, if you apply it everywhere, it's gonna stimulate 
you know, wherever you apply it. So if you've got an area, say, just at the front where you're thinning, but at the back and the crown is perfectly fine, or vice versa, um, there's no real benefit in applying it into an area where you're not really experiencing any significant miniaturization or thinning. So focus on the area where you're concerned. So in this scenario on the crown, um, is just apply it to the crown. If the front is, is, uh, is thick, sufficiently thick, then you don't really need to apply it there. So focus on the area that you want uh, the, that stimulatory effect to exist in. All right. Good. All right. Next question. Hello, Dr. Hudson and Dr. Jay Prakash. Thank I really appreciate the clarity and comprehensiveness of the content you're providing on the show. Uh, I have several questions. Hope you can answer these. Uh, one, what is the effect of long-term stress and anxiety on hair loss? Specifically, what is the effect of cortisol on DHT levels? Right. Okay. Um, so hair loss. So we sh we, we've talked about hair loss, hair shedding. If we're talking about specifically about androgenetic alopecia, well, that's a process of miniaturization. It's caused by genetics and it's also caused by a hormonal component as well. So if you've got a lot of DHT in the system, then that is going to cause, and you've got the gene for hair loss, that is going to cause miniaturization um, of the hair. Now, stress is different. Stress can cause hair shedding. So stress can be, oh, I'm worried about something and I'm going through a difficult phase or stress can be I'm unwell uh, you know there's a lot of it can be emotional or physical stress if you've had surgery for example that is also a stress on the system as well so generally stress can shorten and turn off that hair cycle it causes a hair shed but ostensibly what should happen is that uh, that hair should grow back okay with the same thickness unless it is undergoing that process of miniaturization due to DHT. In that scenario, what potentially can happen is you shed that hair, but the hair that comes back is slightly miniaturized and that will continue on every cycle of that hair. So stress in itself doesn't cause male pattern hair loss, but it can accentuate it if you still, if you have that as an ongoing process. All right. So the next part of that question, well, what is the effect of cortisol on DHT levels? Well, cortisol is a stress related hormone. All right. So we need cortisol. Cortisol is great. We need cortisol for each and every uh, cell to function adequately. Um, and it helps, you know, oxygenation, it helps breathing, it helps circulation, etc. But during periods of extreme stress, then the cortisol levels go up. Now, Cortisol is a vitally important uh, hormone and you, uh, and you can't live without it. So the body has built in a protective mechanism uh, by which uh, it will make sure that uh, we have sufficient cortisol in our system. And, it's, and I don't want to get too technical, but there's a, there's a phenomenon called cortisol steel in which the body will, what it will do, it will divert resources uh, in order to make cortisol at the expense of making other hormones. So uh, if we uh, look at a steroid uh, pathway of how hormones are made, everything starts from cholesterol and then it is changed into a variety of different hormones, progesterone, testosterone, estrogen, DHT. So what the body will do is it will divert resources from making those other hormones to make cortisol. So at the expense of those other hormones, that's what cortisol steel is. So potentially you could argue that under periods of stress, your testosterone is going to drop and as a consequence, potentially your DHT will drop. Uh, but I think so, uh, but I wouldn't necessarily, you know, extrapolate from that saying stress protects you from hair loss. No, because I think stress at the same time can cause shedding. And if you still have the gene for hair loss, it can potentially exacerbate that. Uh, apologies if that was a bit of a serpentine way of, uh, of explaining things, but I just, you know, the, the, the uh, I sort of went off on a tangent there a little bit, but hopefully that makes sense. Um, the next part of that question uh, from this gentleman is, how does the mechanism of diffuse hair loss differ from male pattern hair loss? So there is a, uh, a, a category of hair loss called uh, DUPA, which is diffuse unpatterned uh, alopecia. Uh, 
And we don't know a huge amount of it, but we, what we do know is that the me mechanism is still the same. So if you look at male pattern hair loss in its classical sense, it is, uh, there, uh, there are, is, a, is a classification of it, and we normally classify it as a Norwood classification, various degrees of, of hair loss. And, um, it, but uh, diffuse patterns are still caused by the same mechanism, meaning that it's an elevation of your DHT levels along with the, the genes for, for hair loss. But in this scenario, it's just affecting the hairs on the entire part of the scalp, not just the upper part of the scalp, as is with classical uh, male pattern hair loss. Um, uh, next part of that question, you've mentioned several times that if a strand of hair is less than 50% of the original diameter, finasteride will have minimal effects. What is, uh, if a single follicle produces one thick terminal hair along with one very miniaturized hair, can finasteride help uh, regrow the density in this case? Well, and that does happen. You do, uh, if you look on a dermatoscope, you can see uh, follicular units where one of the hairs are, are thick and then one of the hairs are uh, miniaturized. And certainly with finasteride, what you're trying to do is trying to uh, cause a little bit of thickening and certainly preserve that um, that miniaturized hair. So again, it really depends on how miniaturized that uh, additional hair actually is. Uh, good. All right. Um, let's answer one more question uh, on this episode. Uh, this was a hair transplant question, I think. Yes, here we go. Uh, my question is regarding the possibility of having an FUE transplant after having had FUT. If the back of the head is uh, concealing the linear scar from being visible, will FUE remove hairs that would be covering the linear scar, making uh, it visible? That's a great question, and that comes down to the artistry of uh, having a hair transplant. So if this is the, um, if this is the back of the head, right, and we do see this, and we do, you know, you can combine techniques with FUT and FUE. So uh, FUT will leave you with a linear scar, whereas FUE is going to, you know, cherry pick uh, graphs from, um, from the entire area. Now with this particular question is, well, how do you do FUE when you've got a linear scar to deal with? Well, the issue there is that if that's the linear scar, what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you don't harvest in this area, all right? Above and below uh, the, the FUT scar because FUE is gonna reduce the density of hair in a particular area. So you're right, if you reduce the area, a uh, density of hair above and below, then you might make that area slightly more see-through. So what we do is we, we mark an area above and below uh, that strip scar, and then we can harvest anywhere from uh, in, in this area, and that will be sufficient. And we can, if we can extract enough grafts, that will be sufficient. And, and also you can, if you want, put some grafts into the scar as well to try and break up that scar. So that's also another possibility there. So uh, we've come to the end of today's episode. Hope you found those useful. Thanks again for your questions, and uh, we'll see you on the next episode. Thanks very much.